You ever drive your car like this? Well, if you're sitting in that seat doing that, yeah. you're a lunatic. Or you're from London. <laughs> so, let's talk about how to be happier when you're driving. And making the world a happy place. Yes. Yeah, so we want to talk a little bit about um, happiness as it relates to loosening up, you know. I think of uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Hey, hey, oh, come on, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Like physically. Yeah, you know. Uh, he's got, he always loose grabbed his tie, you know. You probably don't know who Rodney Dangerfield is if you don't oh, look him up. Oh, that's so true. Gotta it's look possible. him up, yeah. But loosen up with people. Loosen up, lighten up when it comes to... Um, you know, your, your, your hot buttons, you know, your temper, your, um, patience and tolerance. Yeah. What triggers you? You know, how do I control people? that stuff? Right? Yeah. Right. So like, for example, you know, here we are out in a car and we, we thought we would shoot this one in a car because generally speaking, when you're out driving, this is when you have the best opportunity to practice patience <laughs> that and, control and lightening up and <laughs> letting people be because of road rage some interesting statistics let's hear them 80 percent of u.s drivers admit to significant anger aggression or road rage in the past year Ooh. now allow me to elaborate 80. a little bit when we talk about road rage the official definition of road rage is attempting or succeeding with your car in hurting someone. Jeez. So hitting their car, hitting them, uh, some sort of violent act on purpose. And that's 80%. No, 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 no. That's 80% oh, have admitted okay. to at least significant anger, okay. aggression, or road rage. Oh, okay, okay, I got gotcha. you. Most people will fall into the category of significant anger. And many, yeah. m many, but not that many, will be aggressive. So the aggressive driving is what people confuse with road rage. Yeah. You know, where they're swerving or cutting people off okay. or giving them the bird yeah. or whatever. Men, of course, are three times more likely than women to actually follow through with a threat <sighs> where they, they're willing to pull over and get out and fight another human being. Man. Um, which is crazy, of course. So how do you, how do you overcome that? I mean, what what do you do? I don't know. I'm asking you. Well, because I'm a hothead. I yeah. It's, I just it's know hard. that I'm happier when I'm not. You know, I can't. I think of someone like uh, Abraham Lincoln. You okay. know, if you've read about Lincoln, you Honestly. know that uh, he had a, a whole you know a whole basket full of stuff that he would do in these kinds of situations. A basket when, full. A very big <laughs> basket full. That's what they called it back in the 1800s. But uh, the one thing that he would do is he, he would get letters from or hear reports or read the newspapers of people that would just rake him over the coals for policy this and practice this and what that and whatever and, and so what he would do is he in his anger and in his rage he would write out a nasty letter you know to these people and then he would throw it away okay. yeah okay as Here's... he's getting as he's getting cut off by someone we just got cut off well, speaking this of guy, road rage I mean, I want to come back to your abraham lincoln but what this gentleman just did in this pickup truck that's he's, now behind us yeah. is there's a turn lane and now he's driving past us which yeah. is great so there's a turn lane uh you know that middle lane the middle lane of the road, three which right? so you're using that as you're as you're getting out of your main lane to turn left onto a street or if you're coming in from an intersection you can legally come out into that turn lane and wait. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to wait there, not accelerate, not get up to speed, and then merge. It's not a merge lane. It's yeah. just a lane for you to wait. And most people will go kind of slow a little bit, maybe yeah. five miles per hour. Then they'll put their blinker on, and then they'll come into traffic. This guy used it as an Indianapolis 500 yeah. pit stop re-emergence lane. <laughs> As he swerved out into it, scaring me a little bit, thinking he's, he was going to come into traffic. He's driving right next to us. You couldn't see it on camera. And speeding but, up yeah. to make this merge. It's a turn lane. Yeah, it's, not not to mention the person coming the other direction that might be might wanting to turn the it. other day. Yeah, the other way. Anyway. Uh, we get we digress. So Abraham Lincoln would throw away the letter. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was just filled with vitriol, filled with yeah. revenge. So one of the whatever. yeah, one of the big things that's been talked about in the in the past few years is this idea of emotional intelligence. What's emotional intelligence? Well, you've got your IQ, right. which is your intelligence quotient, but you also have your emotional quotient. And the argument is that your emotional quotient is much more important than your IQ because it comes down to stimulus and response. Stimulus is the rational part of your brain, but the emotional part of your brain. What am I going to do before I respond? And so Lincoln was a master at emotional intelligence because it's that little space between stimulus and response. How are we going to respond to this situation? He slowed it down, he calmed down, and then it was done. He was gone and, and uh, he, uh, he appropriately responded in a way that wasn't going to offend and even it created the opposite. It would drive his detractors crazy because they were trying to instigate him to yes. to be also uh, also be angry right. and he he, he would just, just great yeah 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 i love that yeah that's that's huge uh advice especially if you know you're going to be driving a lot you know what i mean obviously it's not advice it's a way of life mm -hmm. you know if you're increasing your eq or your emotional iq it's because you care about your own health you care about living a long life uh, if you're a hothead and you're a rager, and you fly off the handle quickly, not only do you, are you at a higher risk of uh, cardiac issues, uh, ulcers, uh, possibly a stroke. Bunions. Yeah, all, all kinds of, all of that. nasty, life-threatening things. Um, but you also sort of indirectly put yourself in danger of getting the crap kicked out of you. Yeah. By someone who doesn't take kindly to yeah. your hot-headedness or who themselves. See, that's the problem when you're in traffic and you're driving along. You have no idea who anyone is, mm -hmm. what they're capable of. Are they packing heat? Are they temporarily or permanently insane? Mm -hmm. You know, just keep your eyes forward. Don't make gestures. Why will that make you happier? Because you'll live longer. Yeah. You'll stay out of traction. You won't need a copay for a doctor's visit. You'll you'll be safe. It's better to be alive than right. You know what I mean? Or dead. Or dead. Yeah. I was trying to be clever. Yeah. The other thing to remember too, especially <laughs> when you're driving, is that nobody cares about you. It's not a personal attack on you, unless they do know you or they're being just jerks. Most people simply are just in their own little world. To you, to them, you're just a car, or you should be. You're just another vehicle. So you don't have to take personal attacks like somebody's, you know, attacking your power and your manhood. That's right. Your identity. It's just someone trying to get into your lane and they're being buffoons by not blinking. Use a turn signal, by the way. Oh, gosh. My number one pet peeve. Oh. I know you're not doing it to personally offend me, but it does drive me nuts. Yeah, yeah. And then finally, um, the people most likely. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this, Jeff. All right. Let's see if you can just just take a quick guess. Okay. Statistically speaking, give me the gender and the make of car that has the highest likelihood of that person having road rage. I would say a male with a jacked up four-wheel drive truck. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> the, the, but but you, you got the male part. Okay, so I think that's all right. Really obvious. Okay. The number one, uh, not predictor that you'll be a loser. <laughs> yeah. But the, those who are most uh, uh, likely to be involved in road rage are males aged 35 to 50 driving a blue BMW. Oh, brother. Talk <laughs> about, you know, granulating. Wow, specifics. Yeah, you know, That's crazy. Narrowing it down your specifics. So if you are 35 to 50 and you're a man and you drive a blue BMW, we beg you to yeah, seek just, help. Get another car. Get anger management courses. Get another color. Or yeah. read the IQ, the EQ book. Yeah. What's the book? Uh, it's called Emotional Intelligence 2.0. I think the guy's name is, I want to say Caldwell, but uh, just look up the title. It's a great book. What are your favorite pet peeves? Well, I guess there wouldn't be favorites. But yep. What are your pet peeves yeah, when it worst comes ones. To, to other drivers and, uh, and their handling of traffic and traffic rules? If you get me started on merging, I could talk oh, all day. Yeah, that'll but be Leave a... your comments in the boxes below. Like us, share us, and if you haven't subscribed by now, 
What up? Yeah. God. 